We're beginning our journey. We're going to visit the Sikhs, and I'm pretty stoked about that. I've studied India, I've seen pictures, but it's, it's a totally different experience to be here. One of the things, we'll all be wearing something over our heads, so that if the women have a scarf or something to wear, just to be on the safe side, you might carry something with you that you could use as a head cover. Males and females cover their heads in the, in the group one. <laughs> Daryl hasn't been able to connect with his regular contact in the city, but decides we should head out anyway. Even without an appointment, he's confident we'll be received. As we navigate the unbelievably congested Bangalore traffic, he explains how the Sikh faith is known for its hospitality. Gurdwaras are always open and typically have doors on all four sides to represent welcoming people from the four corners of the globe. The doors named after Sikh values are peace, livelihood, learning and grace. Finally about to enter the world, Daryl's been involved with most of his life. First as an academic, distinguished professor emeritus at Renison University College in Waterloo, with degrees from Harvard and St. Michael's in Toronto. He's written and edited more than 20 books, authored an encyclopedia on religion in the modern world, and established his own center for interreligious dialogue. It's an impressive set of credentials, but this, here, is what Daryl's really about, taking a group of neophytes on their first visit to a Gurdwara. It's what he loves to do. He calls it living encounter. We're not reading about ceremonial washing, but stepping into the experience, actually getting our feet wet. As promised, we receive a warm reception. We're hosted by one of the Gurdwara committee members, since Sikhs have no ordained priests. A refreshing lack of structure and hierarchy. In the main hall, we learn about Sikh fundamentals, their commitment to equality for everyone, which means that although men and women sit on different sides, everyone sits on the ground, a place of humility toward the focus in every Gurdwara, the Sikh scripture. It's housed in the colorful display at the front of the room. And it's this book that's replaced the entire lineage of Sikh leaders, or gurus as they're called. I thought it was really interesting how the last guru decided that they weren't going to follow any certain leader anymore and that they would just follow the guidelines set out through all the scriptures and hymns that they sang. I think he felt that you know, they couldn't learn any more from man. They just had to follow by the, the rules that were made to just be kind to everyone and make it work in that way, rather than following one, one man's word. It was, I think, a noble act of the last human guru to declare there would be none other after him, but still leave the book as a living guru. That is intriguing. Interestingly, it's not a book of rules or regulations. It's a collection of poems and songs. They sing their scriptures. Uh, for a Sikh individual, I'm sure the experience is more moving than a dry reading you might get from a other religious text. Now that we're here, where does this journey start? How do we begin to connect with what's new and different? It's very simple. Approach them with respect. In a Hindu mandir, when we're in a Muslim mosque, when we're in the secret war, wherever it is that we are, if we give to them a sense that we respect their tradition, then all the doors are open to us. 
The Gurdwara is more than a place to worship. It's also a learning and community center that provides shelter and food. Like everyone who comes, we're invited to stay for a meal called langar. Langar is a very important practice within the Sikh tradition. Everyone's seated on the ground, everyone's treated the same, everyone's served the same thing. A symbol of equality within the community, we're all in it together. The religion says that God is one and everybody is welcome in the Gurdwara. Every day you can have langar here, lunch also, dinner also. Every Sunday about 4,000 persons come here, Sikh and non-Sikhs from other religions. There will be about 200 people cooking in the langar. They're feeding everyone. Um, of different cultures and it's it's one of those things where with food like with music uh, it, it brings people together everybody needs that I also like the emphasis on the constant remembrance of God putting God into your consciousness and when you wake in the morning think about God pray go to the river and so on and so forth, and try to maintain that sort of consciousness through, throughout the day. That, it seems to me, is the heart of what the Sikhs are all about. <laughs>